Greetings dudes, it is I, the one and only, Mighty the Armadillo here, and I am Ray, the Flying Squirrel here, and we are from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll present you our next installment of the Donkey Kong series of Let's Plays. Because previously we've already tackled through Donkey Kong 64 for the Nintendo 64, but as far as fans, as far as this is concerned, that we promised you guys, here we are now on to Donkey Kong Country Returns. Now this game first came out in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii, which I can't even believe has been about almost 12 years ago. Now as a result, we are very, very excited able to tackle for this game, specifically for those of you who suggest that in the comments, back in the forms of by the end of Donkey Kong 64 Let's Play, and we're ha happy to report that we're finally going to be doing this game, because originally, we were expecting to able to try to do this in the forms have been sometime in summer, but we feel like we're miles able to go back for some more of Donkey Kong action every once in a while. You know, especially concerning about the fact that after all, we basically almost tackle through every single uh, games in the series when it comes to Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong Land games that we've already uh, tackled those. So yeah, we figured we might as able to do Donkey Kong Country Returns because we were originally trying to able to play through Donkey Kong King of Swing, but that might be in a later time, especially concerning about the fact that we still haven't got any idea of when the next Donkey Kong game will be releasing during that time. So either way, now as you can tell from the quality st standpoint, we are obviously going to be playing the Wii version of the game because as far as you do not know, this game also came out on a Nintendo 3DS during the events in 2013. So around that time, until when it gets to the point until on the 24th of May, well, I'm suffice to point things out that the 3DS version of the game were expected to become 10 years old during the forms of this month. So, anyway, so let's get to it with the new game right here. So, of course, if you're following through our Let's Plays of the past Donkey Kong Let's Plays ever since in 2019, uh, you probably already noticed about the fact that we did already manage to win through a full 100% completion playthroughs of those games. Well, we're mostly able to do the same thing for this game in particular. However, there's a massive difference with this this time around, though, is that, well, I'm sure we'll explain more details about that if we manage to able to get the game started. So, either way, although originally we weren't going to be playing us on the Wii U to able to boost up the quality, but it turns out we're going to be playing us on the original hardware. So, yeah, because after all, our original Wii hardware is still works even to this day. So, of course, if you managed able to get the game started, there's one player mode, as well as two player mode, as well as extras and options. Well, there's nothing much in options, though, aside from audio options and how to play the game with the controls. But as far as you can definitely tell from the actual control scheme, we're going to be playing the game as in Wii Remote sideways, because with 2D platformers and stuff like this, it will be a lot more easy to manage, at least in my opinion. So either way though, let's get to it with the forms of Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Nintendo Wii. Yep, I'm really looking forward to this. Same here. Especially concerning about the fact that everyone else has been waiting for this. But first, we got ourselves the opening intro cutscene here.
Gee, I wonder what we're gonna do in the beginning portion of the game. Well, we have to shake the Wii Remote! Yep, excellent way to start things off with the game. And, potentially speaking, we're now gonna be dive right into the game itself. So here we are in Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Nintendo Wii slash Nintendo 3DS. And basically though, about the fact that if you ever played the previous uh, Donkey Kong Country games before, although I will explain more details about this in a moment, because here's a nice nostalgic throwback to the forms of the original Donkey Kong Country, that if you get inside Donkey Kong's house, basically you can able to actually get not only the one-up balloon, but also with the forms of that particular TV that we can able to activate that basically it just somehow triggers the actual main theme of Donkey Kong Country Returns theme. So yeah, that's actually super dope. And also, since about the fact that the all the banana stash has been stolen once again, however though, it's gonna be uh been taken by the forms of a different antagonist this time around, which as you can tell, that we actually did pick up the one of those collectibles in the game, which again, I'll explain more details about this as soon as we get the actual playthrough going. So, if you couldn't tell already, it's about the fact that today's day is of course the, uh, is the 1st of May today, in this case in 2023 today, and we're getting very, very close to the halfway point in terms of 2023. Well, concerning about the fact that, well, and during that specific time, though, well, we'll explain more details about that as soon as we get to the later levels in the game. So, obviously, you still be collecting bananas just like the past games, although, most notably, as far as this is concerned, that, as you can tell about the fact that this is on a Nintendo Wii, of course, so about the fact that we actually got ourselves some interesting movesets, like, for instance, as you can tell, we can able to actually still able to perform a roll ability. However, though, it's pretty much limited this time around, though. But that's only mainly because uh, this game has been developed by the forms of a familiar developer. For those of you who ever played Metroid Prime games, basically, though, this game has not only been published by Nintendo, but also has been developed by the forms of Retro Studios. Which, that was before, when Mario Kart 7 was a thing on the Nintendo 3DS. And on top of all that stuff, though, they also made a sequel to this, which appears to be Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Originally, it did came out on the Wii U in 2014, but then it ported over to the Nintendo Switch in 2018. So, relatively speaking, though, about the fact that, well, in terms of the forms of the Tropical Freeze, as far as I'm aware, well, we'll talk more details about that if we continue proceeding for this game. So, either way, so of course, you're able to experience the bananas, like I said before, and if you collect 100 of them, you get a thousand egg life. And so, plus with the forms of those red balloons, like every time you obtain one of those, uh, one-up balloons, basically you get yourselves a one-up. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory for right here. Although the noticeable difference is this time there's no Kong balloon face or anything else like that, unlike the past games. And also, as you can tell, we finally meet up with Diddy Kong right here, and basically, structurally speaking, it plays pretty much exactly like the forms within the Super Nintendo games, which I must say, out of all the actual games that did came out in 2010, when this game first came out in 2010, between the forms of both not only Sonic Colors, but also with the forms of Super Mario Galaxy 2, that this is without a doubt is one of the greatest games to be released on 2010, next to the forms of uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn as well, despite the fact that the UK version has to wait until specifically in 2011, due to the forms of the English uh, UK localization and stuff like that. So, but either way, that might be saying something. And also, we've come across into the forms of those Kong letters, which, if you manage to able to be realized, that unlike in the past games, that when it comes to the Kong letters, basically, if you manage to able to obtain uh, all of the letters representing Kong, basically, you get yourself an extra life. In this game this time around, though, the Kong letters are now a pr progressioning for the sake of the forms of how the fact that in order to able to collect everything, which, again, we're pointing out during that time, so... And of course, the bonus areas does make a return from the past games. However, though, the only major difference is this time is that you only have one attempt this time around, though, as opposed to infinite amount of uh, uh, attempts. 
unlike the past games, because normally if you do manage to fail the bonus area, you can just simply go back there and try again. In here though, if you fail the bonus area, you can't try again, because otherwise, if I somehow slammed here, it just takes me back to the regular level. So because of that, the only time you can able to try again is to do punishing moments, and that is about the fact that, of course, losing a life will be the only option. So, not exactly sure how, though, but I guess Beggar Cells can be choosers, I guess. So... So anyways though, and there's also another few collectibles we can able to obtain, and that is about the fact that as you can tell, we actually did collect quite a few of those banana coins. And what these banana coins can do, well it's kind of similar to the forms of how it does in Donkey Kong 64, although unlike in Donkey Kong 64, they can able to use those banana coins to, well, potentially speaking, try to able to buy your upgrades and stuff like that. Whilst the new forms have been here though, we'll show you guys about that until whatever we proceed to this. So either way, that concludes the first level in Donkey Kong Country Returns. And straight to the point, we actually got all of the Kong letters and also we've got ourselves all nine puzzle pieces. And by the way, every time you do manage to fill up the entire piece of the puzzle piece, you're able to unlock something in your extras menu. So... Yeah, we'll show that off and during that some point in later on throughout the game, so... And of course, the first level we come across into is Jungle High Jinx, so... Pretty standard stuff for the most part. So of course, we can able to actually now actually access the world map. So obviously, much like the past games, it's divided into level by level kind of syndrome. So here we go, on to like the next level in the game, which appears to be World 1-2. King of Kling. So, obviously, that we might be able to come across into certain uh, level mechanics here and there. So, as far as I'm aware, that uh, when it comes to the forms of the progression of certain worlds throughout the game, I'm pretty sure that certain levels might go a bit lengthy this time around, mainly because of the forms of multiple factors. For one, uh, it seems very obvious about the fact that since this is on the Nintendo Wii, this means they have a lot of loading times, like every time when you exit the level, or every time you begin the level. However, the biggest difference as far as you might as well notice, is that every time you, when you die, uh, rather than kick you out of the level and you go all the way back to the world map as you go, unlike the past games. So in here, you can just simply able to actually try again as many times as you think it was. Well, I'm sure I'll explain more about it until whatever you're proceeding for this as well. So either way, and also as you probably already know, that we've already collected those uh, puzzle pieces in the previous level. So as a result though, some levels does manage to able to contain quite a lot of those jigsaw puzzles, like a maximum of nine. Whilst there are a couple of levels, they are sometimes most able to bring us into like five or sometimes seven. So either way though, but as far as for this particular playthrough is concerned, that not only we're going to be able to get ourselves all of the Kong letters, but also we're about to be able to get ourselves every single puzzle pieces in each and every single level. So the process might be a bit lengthy and longer as far as I'm aware, but relatively speaking of it, that might be seems the case when it comes to like for its whole entire completionist as far as this is concerned. And also, as you probably already know, it's about the fact that on the top left corner, the biggest differences between the forms of in the previous Donkey Kong Country games, including Donkey Kong Land games as well, we now actually have a health bar. So meaning about the fact that since then we've already got ourselves both Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong in our hands, so meaning we actually currently got ourselves four health. And then every time whenever you do manage to lose Diddy Kong, I believe you get uh, two hearts. Because generally speaking, there's also the 3DS version of the game, like I said before, but there is actually like two different modes you can able to interact with during the forms of in a 3DS version, which are original mode, which plays pretty much exactly like the Wii version, as well as the new mode, which not only does it brings us the extra health, meaning you get up to like three health as Donkey Kong all alone, or if you manage to have Diddy Kong with you, you can able to have yourselves six units of health. And on top of that, more items is actually introduced on the 3DS version of the game, which I'm not exactly sure when I was able to show off the 3DS version of the game for a brief uh, notice uh, worth noting for. And I do apologize for my commentary because a bit still to that point for this point today. Because let me tell you, I am so excited to able to actually just to play this game. Because I don't know about you, it's been a very, very, very long time 
since I actually have last played this game, at least specifically on the Wii version, because I don't know about you, I'm more accustomed to the forms of the, uh, the 3DS version a bit more, and on top of that with the sequel, Tropical Freeze, but that's just because about the fact that this particular version of Donkey Kong Country Returns does encourage you to be able to utilize a lot of motion controls here and there. Well, nothing major, at least in specifically studs and stuff, but to be more specifically for some segments, like for instance with the forms of, uh, you know with the rolling mechanic that you have to utilize with in the past games? Well, usually on the Wii version, in order to be able to actually, uh, pull off a roll ability, you do need to shake the Wii Remote. Although, to be fair though, about the fact the matter is though, since that we do have Diddy Kong with us, you can uh, probably able to actually pull off the insane amount of uh, roll attacks that you can able to actually like, you know, ram into any other enemies and all that stuff. Well, usually compared to the, the 3DS version, that basically is all about button mashing. So, yeah, that might be saying something. So, either way, now, I get the horrible feeling that something tells me I think I was able to concede this right now. I think we're actually missing something. To be more specifically, a puzzle piece as far as I'm aware. Yeah, because as far as I'm aware, that the trickiest part about getting those puzzle pieces is where you're able to find them. Because some other times, certain puzzle pieces are pretty easy to uh, find at one point, but then there are occasional moments where the fact that it will be potentially be well hidden. Like, specifically, we're not exactly sure if we pay attention to those surroundings. So, either way, though, we're most able to double-check on that. Well, assuming, of course, if we do manage to be able to go into, like, well, we'll find out exponentially. So, I think something tells me there's going to be a, uh... Let me just blow this. Uh, there we go. It's just a banana coin. I almost first thought that was going to be a final puzzle piece in here. But, I think we should might as well go back for that eventually, so... But at the very least though, we did manage to be able to get all the Kong letters at least. And by the way, certain sound effects have been reused from the likes of the forms of in Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, as you realize. Yeah, which I found was actually kind of strange, kind of thinking about it. Because relatively speaking though, about the fact that despite this has been made by the forms of not only from Nintendo, but also with Retro Studios as well. So either way, and time to fire our cannon, and BOOM! Man, I love doing motion mashing sometimes. Well, not all the time though, but most of the time, so either way. So, at the very least, we did somehow complete the level, aside from missing that particular puzzle piece. But, that again, we will be back for that eventually. So, either way, that basically does it from here. So, before we move on to the next level, because there is actually another thing we can go to, that's what it appears to be we're about to be meeting up with Cranky Kong. Because, as far as I'm aware, if we go into here, specifically World 1-S, which means we're able to come across into Cranky C Cr Cranky Kong shop. And basically, you can able to buy all sorts of things in here. Like, for instance, as you saw, there are red balloons, which signifies the forms of those numbers, as you can tell. Like, basically, we come across into one, three, or seven red balloons, which obviously gives you extra life. As well as that, there's also Squawks the Parrots, which does make a return, as well as Heart Boost and Banana Juice. And also, most notably, is that as you can see, we come across into a map key. And by the way, in order to buy the map key, we need to grind as many of those banana coins as you can. So meaning about the fact that you have to do a lot of farming when it comes to likely getting those banana coins. So, it might take a bit while to be able to actually get most of them anyway though. Even though, just like the forms of how it does in Donkey Kong 64, you can able to actually get so many possibilities, you can able to grind as many of those banana coins as you can. So, anyways, let's move on to the next level, which appears to be World 1-3. Tree Top Bob. So, either way, and as you can see, since that we've already purchased ourselves the map key, so meaning that the actual chain lock is no longer existence. So, you can potentially try to able to unlock the next level. Well, assuming, of course, you need to finish this level first. Yeah, because something tells me about the fact that, well, I think in order to able to actually go for a 400% completion of the game, is that, well, as far as what uh, Ray has already mentioned about this before, not only do you have to be able to get all the Kong letters in each and every single level, but also you have to get every single puzzle pieces in the whole game. And on top of that, there's going to be something else to the table, which will save that conversation until whenever we get to the majority of the month. So, either way, that might be some consumption, so... 
But uh, anywho, so there are quite a few things I would like to explain about this for the most part. It's about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, since that this is the, the first world in the game so far, expecting the game will start things off a bit easier at one point. But then, trust me, much like the Falsa Barry does in Donkey Kong Country 2, basically, the game will get pretty tough later on, especially in the later worlds, but that's just because about the fact that, well, generously enough, is that this game gives gives us a lot of plentiful of extra lives, which, potentially speaking, though, just in case about the fact you don't want to see this god-awful game over screen a lot less, well, usually relatively speaking though, because we'll explain more details about that if we get to World 2. So, either way. So, I will admit though right away is about the fact that the visuals in this game looks spectacular. Yeah, especially concerning that, you know, this game did came out in 2010 along the same lines as Sonic Colors, along with the forms of Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll, and potentially speaking though with uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 as well, and heck, even especially noticeable with Kirby's Epic Yarn as well. Yeah, which, for the record though, 2010 for the Wii, uh, for the Nintendo Wii games is fantastic. Well, apart from a couple of exceptions though, mind you, which appears to be both, uh, let's just say, by the forms of Epic Mickey, because I found the game kind of boring, to be honest. Well, that's just because about the fact that, well, and also not to mention though, about the fact that we have a lot of struggles with the nunchuck combo, because obviously, because it's still gone loose at one point. Oh! Before we get into more details onto this though, here we have the returning animal buddy ever since in the past Super Nintendo titles. That's what appears to be buddy forms of Rambi the Rhino. And basically he behaves exactly like the forms of how it does it in the previous games for sure. Although as you can see, he does learn his new move, which appears to be the actual foot stomp. And basically you can able to actually actually access to other areas, like for instance the bonus area. So but keep it in mind though, it's about the fact that since we're on the bonus area right now, meaning about the fact that you have to rely on the forms that you need to be fast on these parts because you have to worry about the time limits because if you let the time run out well basically you can't try again unless if you waste a life so either way though that might be still punishing if you are managed able to do all that stuff so either way nice we got ourselves our next puzzle piece nice one dude Yep, exactly. Especially concerning about the fact that, well, again, despite the fact that it's been a very, very, very long time since I actually last played the forms of Donkey Kong Country Returns, on the Wii version most likely, because I somehow managed to play the 3DS version a lot, just because on the 3DS version I can at least manage to play the game on the go, and on top of all that stuff though, it does manage to be able to have an exclusive content that was not found on this version in particular, which we'll talk more about that until whenever we continue proceeding for this game. So, although potentially speaking though about the fact that for those of you probably wondering about the forms of what happened to our continuation uploading schedules for the likes of Kirby's Return to Dreamlands Deluxe, if you guys are probably wondering, well, mainly because Tiana wants to take a break for a little while. That's just because about the fact that she's probably already played too much about it. Especially concerning about the fact that we're about to be preparing to able to play the next Nintendo Switch game, or should I say, the next big Nintendo Switch game we might as well play on our own time. And that's of course, you know, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which by that time we've only got about 11 days to go now until the game finally comes out. So, pretty excited about that. And in fact, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, did you guys ever experience Donkey Kong Country Returns on either the Wii version or the 3DS version on your life? Because, relatively speaking, we somehow own both versions of the game. Because let me tell you, this game is really awesome. Especially concerning about the fact that I'm pretty sure we got every single puzzle pieces aside from G. So, relatively speaking, there's a G right here. So, of course, you can either just use Rambi the Rhino right there, or if we just somehow jump on this frog-like enemy, that way we can able to actually just to get the G from here. And let me go ahead and uh, do this little uh, end goal thingy right there, so... Yeah, but uh, before you do that, that you just double check on the forms of that particular dandy lions or somewhat. Anyways, here we go! And somehow we've got about 15 bunch of bananas right there, so that actually boosts us our banana count. So, either way, that basically does it for this level. Pretty simple and easy. Although, relatively speaking though, when it comes to the animal buddies in this game in particular, there's only two this time around, which... 
again, we'll talk more about that once we get to the next level. So in some cases, now we can able to actually access to either World 1-5 or World 1-4, Sunset Shore. So I think we should probably tackle for this level first, just because we'll go through these levels in a chronological order when it comes to the numbers. So, anywho... Oh yeah, I think I do remember this level, because this level is actually the introduction to those uh, unique level types, and that's what appears to be the introduction to the silhouette um, level types, which I will say, it looks so gorgeous in here. Especially, it actually uh, continues that until Tropical Freeze rolls around, either on the Wii U or the Nintendo Switch versions, so either way though, and also I just really love the music by the way, it's so ambient. So, although the only drawback I can think about when it comes to the presentation about this game is that I feel like certain characters made out of plastic at one point. Yeah, especially noticeable when it comes to both Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong themselves, at least in the end game's graphics. Although, usually, when you feel most able to before you start the game off, we actually introduce into ourselves the forms of this amazing CGI cutscene, which I will say, it looks spectacular. So, either way though, and I kind of believe by saying this about the fact that I'm pretty sure Sonic did actually told me something, that not only does this game came out on the exactly the same day, as in the Nintendo Wii re-release of the Super Mario All-Stars packaging, thanks to the forms of the 25th anniversary of the Super Mario Bros. celebration, Oh, and by the way, if you stand on here for a long period of time, and basically that particular silhouette of that banana thing right there just, uh, you know, just scattered, and then basically not only does it gonna be filled to the brim with those bananas, but also with banana coins as well. Yeah, which I think is actually a pretty cool reward if you manage to do something like this, so... And by the way, this particular part right there, with all these ants creeping up, it does kind of remind me of one of those American DVD copies of ants. You know, when if you go to the bonus material option, like basically you see those uh, workers managed able to just walk across the actual uh, menu and stuff like that, which I found was quite intriguing. Which reminds me, how come the UK version never got that menu? Like, all it gets is just a static menu, and that's all there is to it. It's kind of bare bones, honestly. And also, if you stand here, basically, we're able to get another jigsaw puzzle piece. And also, some more bananas on top of that. So yeah, it's a really, really, really generous when it comes to the fact that this game does give you a lot of extra lives. But not only are you able to come across into, like, you know, a lot of those banana balloons. No, sorry, the... The one-up balloons. I keep thinking about the forms of Donkey Kong 64 for some reason. But, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... Although originally, we were expecting to be able to tackle through the forms of any other version of Donkey Kong Country, which appears to be on the Game Boy Color, or the Game Boy Advance versions, but maybe in a later time, because obviously, that everyone else is really looking forward to this particular playthrough, especially that you know what I mean about the fact that, well, everyone else is really excited about this playthrough, myself included, including me as well, so either way, yeah, because with that being said though, about the fact that it seems kind of weird, that we obviously keep on showing up in Journey Forms of the Maxi Toys channel itself. I'm guessing because we are now extremely popular when it comes to the two of us, you know, with, you know, I'm Ray and you are Mighty, my biggest brother, when it comes to, like, you know, anything else for our resides, you know? Yeah, especially concerning because, you know, this year will marks the, uh, well, since we are in 2023, that we're both generally 30 years old. Yeah, potentially speaking, since when the uh, when we first appeared on is of course Sega Sonic the Hedgehog arcade machine. So that's actually super cool and everything. So ah, oh, jeez, I keep on getting hit by those frogs. Anyway, so and I can assure you, I think there's gonna be something up there. So if I somehow jump on here and then avoid those enemies in the process and make sure I don't lose Diddy Kong and. There's our fifth and final uh, puzzle piece. And of course, they're able to end off the levels by doing this. And that way, you can able to make your way to not only uh, some more of those, uh, you know, hand slamming uh, segments, but also a gold barrel. So, however, if you do manage to hit the Donkey Kong symbol, you can able to just shake the Wii mode like crazy. And 15 is the only maximum you can get up to. So, either way, though. That pretty much does it for Sunset Shore. A pretty unique level indeed, especially because it actually introduced one of my favorite level art style, which is of course, the silhouette style. Because either way, 
I just love that particular visual style. So anyways, let's move on to the next level, which appears to be Canopy Cannons. I think it's what it says anyway. I do apologize for that mispronunciation of that particular level's name, by the way. So, now if you're probably wondering to yourself about the fact that what's up with the forms of that particular blue uh, building structure at the beginning portion of the map, well, turns out about the fact that in order to be able to actually access to one of those special levels in the game, well, we'll point out when if we completely done with the forms within the sixth level after this, so... Feels like we're not doing too bad in this game, especially concerning about the fact that after all, no deaths so far, Although, keep in mind, you spoke too soon on this one, because obviously the next level is going to be one of those level gimmicks, so... Oh, shoot, I realized about something, because either way, though, this is why the game starts to get pretty difficult at points. But either way, that will be mentioning and doing at some point in later on throughout the day, so... So yeah, um, as you can tell, there's also another move which appears to be body forms of blow. Now, in order to be able to activate the blow ability, is that you have to press the directional pad down and shake the Wii remote in a process, so that way you can able to blow stuff, and potentially speaking, you can get different kinds of rewards there. So, relatively speaking though, I can totally see why that particular ability is being replaced by, let's say, a grabbing thing from the likes of the forms of Tropical Freeze, because it is kind of weird for that particular ability in my eyes. But either way, though, that might be saying something. Oh gosh, this bonus area. Because if you dare manage to be able to shoot the actual uh, automatically uh, uh, go downwards barrel, then obviously we will fail the bonus area. So it's all about timing, you know, so... Alright, it's gonna have to focus. Ooh, nice. Nicely done there. Yep, and we got ourselves another puzzle piece, so how's off for that? One thing I really loved about this is that every time when you do complete the bonus areas like this one, basically it brings the actual classic uh, music back from the likes of the forms of Donkey Kong Country 1, where basically if you do manage to succeed the bonus area, then it gets like a familiar jingle in the background, as you definitely hear from earlier ago. Which I think is actually pretty swell. Oh, and on top of all that stuff though, about the fact that technically you can also manage to able to, well, aside from you can able to take control of the game within the Wii Remote Sideways, which I honestly do prefer the Wii Remote Sideways control style, but it's also you can also utilize the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo as well. But I will admit that right away, the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo feels a bit awkward in this game to me though, especially concerning about the fact that I can assure you there's no dedicated run button on the likes of the forms of the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo, because as far as I'm aware, it's been replaced by the forms of the actual how far you can tilt on the actual control stick on the Nunchuck, and something tells me we missed that jigsaw piece right there. Although we're not going to take a death or anything else like that, because otherwise that will be so stupid, so... But at the very least, we got all the Kong letters at the very least, so... And we have to rush this part, because otherwise, if we don't make it at, at one point, we will die instantly. Yeah, especially no spoil, you've almost got messed up right there. Yeah, I honestly do not pay attention to that at all, so... But either way, we somehow got this. But, uh... Yeah, because as a result, if you're trying to be able to play the game on Wii Remote on its sideways, then basically you know, there was actually a dedicated run button by pressing and hold down the one button, and that's all there is to really think about. Plus, with the Wii Remote sideways control style, that's the only control method I do honestly prefer. Yeah, especially concerning about the fact that, well, I should probably also mention about this as well, that uh, that's the reason why that we no longer have ourselves the, well, I suppose, that, actually, I'll get to more now in a moment, because either way, here we go on to the next level, which appears to be Vault 1-6, Crazy Cards. Oh, something tells me we might be able to go into the minecart segments. Yep, just like the forms of it does in the old days. However, it's going to be a little bit different this time, because as far as I'm aware, it brings us to the most impossible things we can ever come across into. Well, I'm not exactly sure how to explain about this, though, because, again, it's been a very long time since I actually have last played this, so... Anyway, so as you probably already know it, we've already got the first Jigsaw puzzle at the beginning of the level, because thanks to the forms of the intro cutscene, we know exactly how to obtain it, so it's self-explanatory to obtain. Alright, so it's time to pound this thing up, and sure enough, we can able to proceed by 
you know, keep on climbing and all that stuff while going from platform to platform, and that's all there is to it. And something tells me there's a bonus area right over there. In fact, kind of think about it, the bonus area entrance does kind of remind me of almost entirely related to Rayman Origins, actually. Because, well, despite the fact that Rayman Origins did came out about a year after this game, so as a result of that kind of stuff, though, is about the fact that, speaking of uh, Rayman Origins, that I suppose that Tiana, she probably explains it for a brief moment, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, let me point for that summarize, is that we no longer have the Xbox 360 version of Rayman Origins for right now, but that's just because about the fact that I think to me, that since then we've now got ourselves the Wii version of Rayman Origins right now, meaning about the fact that I honestly do prefer the Wii Remote as a controller for 2D platformers, whilst compared to the 360 uh, controller though, it's fine for the most part, except the fact that with this moshy D-pad, which that's the only criticism I feel like for the sake of that particular control scheme, full 2D platforming in mind, so... Anyways, here we go on to the minecart segment in Donkey Kong Country Returns, and it plays pretty much exactly like the past games, you know? Well, except the noticeable difference there is that if you dare get hit by any other hazards, including enemies like these mole cards, as you can tell, basically, if you dare get touched by the phones of those enemies, you die instantly. Oh, jeez, that would be a nerve-wracking experience, all things considered. Especially concerning about the fact that, well, if you think you're basically pretty much... Oh, wow. Somehow we've almost gotten every single puzzle pieces at this point. Well, apart from the fact that for one thing in mind, I'm pretty certain about the fact that we're missing one. That's just because of that particular piggy jump that we did somehow manage to able to mess up from. Ah, oh, Mr. Yen! Speaking of picky jump, there you go. So, of course, there's our first step of the playthrough. Not gonna say this right now. Between the minecart segments, including the another um, mechanic or the level gimmick as well, these are by far the hardest aspects about the game to me anyway, just because, well, again, if you get hit just once, then obviously you lose a life. And potentially speaking, you never know of certain patterns they might able to actually ambush you from, and I forgot to jump, because I can definitely tell that particular tiki-like enemy just somehow lowers down and all that stuff. But, uh, relatively speaking, though, about the fact that I can totally see why this is one of the hardest Wii games to complete. Especially concerning, just like the Fonsa Power does in Rayman Origins. Although, unlike in Rayman Origins, thankfully, Rayman Origins does have infinite amount of lives, so you can die as many times as you wanted to. Whilst in here, though, you do have lives. So, potentially speaking, though, that is the perfect example of why we tend to be able to realize that we might drain a lot of lives fast. So,. But as you saw, we no longer managed to able to return back to the world map at the very least, so that's something going for, right? Yeah, especially concerning about the fact that they don't want to go for, like, frustrating loading times or somewhat. Well, I don't know why you mention it about that, though, Mighty, because you're thinking of something else, aren't you? Well, I don't know about you, though, because either way, though, it has been a very long while since we actually, uh, last recorded some stuff like this, so... Alright, there we go. At the very least, we did manage to get all the Kong letters, and it's time to jump, and that way we can get three more banana coins. So, and exponentially, once you get to this bit, that's pretty much it, really. Even though it's a shame that we've lost Diddy Kong, but either way, I'm sure we'll get him, assuming that now we can able to go back to the previous levels if we wanted to at this point, even though we're missing out one last puzzle piece in this level, as you can tell. And since we actually completed the Kong letters for each and every single level in World 1, basically, this level now opens up. But we'll save that until for later, so I'll meet you guys back until we find the puzzle pieces. So, yeah, let's get to it. Alright, as far as I'm aware, it's in this section, isn't it? And I believe something tells me with the bit of uh, greenness to it. Ah, there it is. Jeez, sometimes these puzzle pieces can be pretty well hidden if you're not knowing what to do here. Well, this is actually a kind of a fun bonus stage, at least to me anyway, because you're bouncing like a trampoline almost. So, at the very least, now we can able to easily pick up the remaining collectibles in here. And there we go, there's our last puzzle piece in level 1-2. So, either way though, that's it for this level. In the next level, we're going to be hitting onto is World 1-5. Alright, so as far as I'm aware, there are two missing pieces. So I believe, in this section right here, 
Aim downwards. Ah, there we go. And I believe since that we instantly sold that on our previous attempt, so I believe the layer of bananas will directly go straight into that puzzle piece. And on to the last level right there. Alright, there we go. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that jump right there for that last puzzle piece right there is still pretty picky, though. Anyways, let's move on to the next level, which appears to be World 1-K Platform Panic. So as you can tell, since that we've already unlocked this level, now to unlock every single of those, I would say the temple levels, basically, as I said before, you do need to uh, complete um, the con letters for each level, and that way, as soon as you accomplish that, you will greet into is probably, is without a doubt, is the hardest levels in the entire game, which appears to be, like, almost, I repeat, almost every single temple levels. So, for instance, here we go on to Platform Panic, even though when you do have Diddy Kong with you, it won't be so bad, but it will give you a lot of tested patience. So as a result of that kind of stuff though, it's definitely a lot challenging. Although potentially speaking though, these levels also contains puzzle pieces you know as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of emphasis on timing, you know? So, yeah, I guess that's what I can really say about this game, honestly, because either way, we've already explained about quite a few things here and there, so either way, though, I guess there might be some consumption for that, so... Although, thankfully, if you do manage to be able to die in any point in the level, thankfully you don't need to be able to collect those puzzle pieces again, because obviously, if you do manage to get the puzzle piece, you'll keep it forever. However, if you do die at any point of the level, if you do manage to obtain one of those Kong letters, basically you have to re-grab them again. So, that might be pretty stingy on my part, and I did not meant to activate the roll ability, because that way, we lost Diddy Kong in the process. Oh well, no big deal. But uh, on top of all that stuff though, about the fact that as you can tell, we've already got even more extra lives, because thanks to the forms of, you know, more bananas that we keep on collecting, and all that stuff. So relatively speaking, though, as I said before, this game is super generous when it comes to giving you more extra lives, even though despite I did die right there, because I did not pay attention to the actual footing, so... Oh well. Oh, and by the way, if you keep dying a lot for a single level, I think something tells me the actual Super Guide mode will be activated. Unlike the forms of how it does it in Tropical Freeze, that surprisingly enough, in Tropical Freeze, never actually bring back the Super Guide feature, which I'm not exactly sure how though. Tell me about it, especially concerning about the fact that I'm gonna show to you it does have a lot of criticism for most game players, or specifically pro players like ourselves. Yeah, I believe something tells me about that, so, oh jeez, I've lost my one heart so far, and generally I'm not able to die again, so it might potentially happen, so. Oh jeez, I think this skirt takes us a lot of concentration at this point, unlike the actual regular levels that we did have a lot of... Uh, encourages you to be able to do a lot of exploration. So, either way though, well, I can assure you for each and every single temple-like levels, it will just, presumably, gives you a lot of concentration to focus on. But it feels like we're not doing too bad so far. Well, I won't have spoke too soon on this, because otherwise I will die at, at, any, at any point, so... Alright. There's the next puzzle piece right here. Oh, that's the last one. Huh. It only contains like five puzzle pieces on- Oh no! I was so close! Oh jeez. I was not expecting that. Oh well. But at the very least though, about the fact that now we've actually got all the puzzle pieces, so now we can do the level as normal, so... Yeah, especially concerning about the fact that, well, it's it's pretty tough though. I could imagine if you're able to try to play with two-player mode, it will be a lot more chaotic. Especially concerning about the fact that if you ever play with two-player mode, you can able to actually take control of Donkey Kong alone, or Diddy Kong alone, like, as a result for Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong separately. Whilst if you ever play with one-player mode, you do have Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong together, as in backpack or piggyback ride, or anything else like that, for Diddy Kong's case. So, and that way you can able to actually activate the actual jetpack, so that way you can able to float in mid-air. 
at least for a few seconds, so. Alright, so best of sure do not roll because obviously that you will fail instantly if you dare roll, so. Oh jeez, I think I'm I think my heart is actually beating way too fast in these segments right there. But still. Alright, I'm almost there. I would have liked to able to jump cut for that point, but honestly I think this particular level is not gonna be as lengthy as it looks. Alright, there we go. Oh wee. That's pretty tough though. But believe me, there's going to be more to it though in during the later worlds. So either way, that pretty much does it for Platform Panic. And as a result, we get one of those, uh, colored orbs. Now, as far as I'm aware, with those colored orbs, they'll be imported for later. So either way, I think we're now miles away able to say this right now. We can finally take on the very first boss in the game after almost 50 minutes of recording session or somewhat. So here we go, on to Mugly's Mood. Or mound, as far as I would pronounce that correctly. So, either way, again, I apologize for my comment tag is a bit slightly still to their points, but either way, though, hopefully in the next video, then we should be able to get back into the most comfortable uh, commentary of them all. So, either way, let's bring out Diddy Kong out and take on the very first boss in Donkey Kong Country Returns. Alright, so here we go with the first boss, and I can assure you, the first boss is overall the easiest boss fight in the game, and it's self-explanatory for the most part, especially that the best method for this is, though, is to able to stop on his back for about a few times, and that's basically all there is to it. So, either way, though, not much to write to home about for the, the actual challenge of this boss fight itself, even though you might not want to recommend trying to able to jump onto its head, because otherwise, if you dare jump right near to its spikes, that you do get hurt. So, either way, and eventually at some point or another, he starts to able to do some small hops here and there. But I will admit though, you can easily just manage to able to do the insane amount of hits on him, assuming of course if you have a good timing on your jumps. So, either way, that basically does it for the second phase. And now onto the third and final phase, he's now pure mad and ticked off at the same time. And he pretty much does the same thing. So, either way, hopefully we can able to finish him off, assuming of course if we, uh, be very careful, and... Oh, he's done. Huh. That's overall too easy and piece of cake at the same time. And something tells me with all these uh, bosses, they got brainwashed by those uh, Tiggies. Because these Tiggies are the main threat in this game this time around. Because as opposed to in the old school days, that the Kremlings is actually taking over when it comes to that particular stuff. So, either way. And to perfectly end things off when it comes to each every fight, more motion mashing! I don't know how many hits we did somehow managed to beat the likes out of this guy, so either way, I can assure you in every single Tiggies in this game, does manage to have names by the way, so either way, now we got ourselves the music gallery option is now added, including the actual diorama that we also unlocked as well, but that'll be a discussion in a later day, so even with that being said, World 1 is fully completed, in this case the jungle world, so with that being said though, I think we should probably end things up here, so join us next time for more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country Returns, is that we're going to be moving on to the second world in the game, which appears to be the beach, so yeah, it's a very simple name. So I'll see you guys until on Wednesday, later dudes, see you guys then.